Speaker Eileen Fillercorn. Hello, can you hear me, Brian? Yes, thank you. Great, great. Well, it's so good to be with you all again. I too wish we could be in person, but thank you, Brian, for everything that you have done and continue to do. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't also give a shout out to uh, Tina and Jack and so many people for putting this together um, and for all the hard work and efforts from all the FCDC members. I mean, electing every single Democratic House candidate running in Fairfax County. That's impressive. That's something to cheer about. So thank you, thank you. And um, I know uh, Charnel Herring and Rip Sullivan and the rest of our um, amazing, amazing um, House Democratic Caucus members, thank you all so much. We've got an incredible team and I wish I could call them all out right now, but you know, we, we are there with you and we know you have been with us. Um, thank you so much to um, Senate Majority Leader Dick Saslaw and all of the state senators on for your partnership over the past two years. And we are ready, we, the House Democratic Caucus, are ready to work closely with you to protect all the progress as well as hold the Republicans accountable. So to all of the uh, Democratic elected uh, officials that are on the call, thank you for everything that you all have done this past year, two years. It's been, been a challenge, I know, but you guys have just provided such steady leadership making sure that our students and our families and our public spaces are safe. So thank you so much for your leadership and courage. And I'd be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to our amazing members of Congress for all that you have done and continue to do. So I remember, as you all do, two years ago, standing before you saying that as the speaker designee, I was asking if you were ready, ready to make it easier to vote in the Commonwealth, ready to pass gun laws to make sure that we could keep our families safe, ready to rid our laws of discrimination, ready to make Virginia not only the best place in the United States for business, but also for workers, ready to raise the minimum wage in Virginia, ready to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment. And I remember standing in the cheering room for every single one of those priorities and so much more. And I have got great news. You know what? We got every single one done. Together, we have literally transformed the Commonwealth for the better, passing legislation that would have been unimaginable even just five years ago. And we did it during unprecedented times, during a pandemic, a health crisis that affected every single aspect of life here in the Commonwealth. And honestly, not just the Commonwealth, but the world, and still continues to this day. When we were faced with that challenge, we met it, passing legislation to prevent price uh, gouging, right? getting PPE to the first responders, speeding up vaccinations, providing funds to help small businesses stay afloat, and so much more. We kept Virginia as the best state to do business through all of it, even if our governor-elect doesn't want to admit it. While our governor-elect says that he wants to restore fiscal sanity to the Commonwealth, let's have the numbers speak for themselves. We, the Democrats, are leaving a budget surplus of $2.5 billion dollars. That's the largest in history, while also making unprecedented investments in economic relief to working families, raising teacher pay, and so much more. And when we had a special session to distribute ARPA funding last August, you know what we chose to do? We responsibly left aside $1 billion for the possibility of another COVID surge. surge. And guess what? We're experiencing that now. So I, I would be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to our Appropriations Chair Luke Torian and Senate Finance Chair Janet Howell for their fiscal leadership. And you know what? We did all of this, put all these measures in place in the House to make sure that our, to keep our legislator, legislature on the job, to make sure we could conduct business and represent you all and our constituents. And we provided the leadership that Virginia needed, it, needed at, at that time. I could not be prouder of what we accomplished together. And you know, when, when I think about moving forward, we can't chart our path forward without acknowledging the past. And the elections in November clearly did not go the way we had expected nor hoped. Governor-elect Len Youngkin and the Republican leadership used fear, they used misinformation, division to ensure that they won the governor's mansion. And you know what? It was by the smallest, smallest of majorities in the House. There's no mandate, quite clearly. They, they stoked anxieties, exasperated um, by the ongoing pandemic, and their lives, ha their lives have prolonged. They categorized our party as the one who focused on shutdowns. But let's be honest here. Democrats are the party of making sure that we're keeping Virginia open. 
through implementing common sense health measures and pushing for vaccinations. Meanwhile, the governor elect has pushed our out our Virginia's top health expert in the middle of a public health crisis. I'm sure you all saw that as well. We Democrats are working hard to make sure we can keep Virginia open and healthy. We've got the 10th highest vaccination rate in the nation and Republicans right now are pulling back the strategies that got us here. Let us be clear, the Republicans, when they ran, they didn't run on these issues. They didn't win on these issues. Remember when they asked about reproductive choice, what did Glenn Youngkin do? He hid. When they pressed him on the environment, Republicans said they would not roll back all the progress, all the protections that we've made to combat climate change and keep the water and air clean. When asked about educa education, Glenn Youngkin pretended to be a friend of our teachers. On every issue, Republicans avoided fighting on the substance because they knew that we would fight, that we would win those fights. They led on misinformation, on, they relied on misinformation, on falsehoods, distortions, and they honestly continue to try to hide their positions. But you know what? Now we see who they are. Just this week, you all saw it. The governor-elect Glenn Young nominated Donald Trump's EPA administrator to lead his environmental policy, Andrew Wheeler. As our governor-elect is putting policies before our, you know, putting politics before the safety of our communities through his intention, as he just stated two days ago, to rescind the mask order in our schools, it's reckless. It's a reckless decision. It endangers our ability to keep our kids in school. And let me be clear, we must keep our, our schools open. As for the Republican House, they've introduced a few of their bills, only a few, we'll see more in the next few days, but it's already, we know, we've got a sense of where their priorities lie. One bill just introduced, I think it was um, Thursday, would allow guns in home daycare centers and preschools. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. It's the old adage, they ran on one thing and now they're doing another, no doubt, I am here to tell you that the, the House Democrats will hold this administration and the House Republican leadership accountable every step of the way. If they come for reproductive rights, we won't stand for it. If they come for rights of workers, we won't stand for it. And if they come for the Commonwealth to make our Commonwealth less welcoming and choose the politics of exclusion over inclusion, we will not stand for it. And the next time we run, whenever that is, we will make sure Virginians know about their record. But let me be sure, clear right now, uh, we will not stop pushing this session to make sure that Virginia is fairer and safer and stronger. And remember when the Republicans were last in power and leader, leader Sassel uh, made reference to this? It was because of us. It was because of you. It was because of our constant effort, our determination and our passion that we were able to pass Medicaid expansion. And guess what? No shock to us. It saved countless lives, especially during this pandemic. So we're still gonna move. We're gonna push for the $15 minimum wage to make sure that's a reality. We're still gonna push to, for a historic raise for teachers. We're still gonna push for lower drug costs for Virginians. And we're going to push to make higher education affordable for every Virginian. And expand a bill that I was so proud to carry along with leader Sasslaw for Governor Northam's administration, the G3 college bill, which had made college free and open doors of opportunity for so many Virginians. So, and getting back to that $2.5 billion surplus, we're gonna to fight to make sure that when money is, that to, to make sure that money is returned to the people for tax relief, that money is returned for working Virginians who need it. So in conclusion, thank you all so much. I just wanted to make sure you heard some of our priorities and what we're thinking, our house caucus, the House Democratic Caucus is, stands firm with you to hold the line on everything that we've accomplished together and to make sure that we keep Republican leadership honest and accountable. And I know that you all are with us. We're ready to partner, work closely with the Senate to do exactly that. We have come way too far to go to turn back now. And I promise you that we will be moving Virginia forward before too long. We just need to keep our heads high, roll up our sleeves and get back to work. I know the best days are ahead of us, filled with many more victories, more achievements, and ultimately a fairer, freer, and more prosperous Virginia. So my fellow Democrats, let's get ready for this fight. We are right on the issues. 
We know we're right on the issues and Virginians are on 